cameras zooming in and also taking questions if you have a question during the live show. Now, the whole goal of this painting, and my whole goal just really is a channel, is to help you paint. So if you're really interested in painting, I have a thousand lessons that I've already done, and we have over 200 planned this year. So if you think it's cool to learn how to paint for free, hit that subscribe button and then leave me a comment about what you might be interested in painting. But after you do a search, because I have painted like a thousand things, so I might have five of what you're looking for. Now today is pretty exciting because this is a very beginner friendly flower. It's gorgeous as a decorative flower. It's beloved by so many. It has been painted by famous artists. You're going to get to join their ranks today. And it's beginner friendly. Mm -hmm. which I think makes it a very exciting flower. And the black canvas also makes things beginner friendly, which I like a lot. So this is our reference. These are provided for you on the website. If you would like to print one out or have one on a device near you, we do also kind of include one uh, picture in picture mm -hmm. uh, during the show. Actually, we started that. <laughs> the picture in picture. Now we're like, print out your own. It's very strange. This is a 16 by 20 canvas. It has been painted black. You could use a pre-blackened canvas or black gesso. Either is fine. There was a real-time drawing video that we did the pre in the pre-show. Mm -hmm. That's ready for viewing on our website. That's okay. real-time. We don't rush through. We explain everything we're doing. Now that I, was all step one. That was step one. So you would go to my website, uh, theartsherpa.com, and you'll see a picture of this with the grid, and you would go there. And it's just a very mellow explanation of how you can start to learn how to draw and get images on your canvas at a very reasonable pace. So you don't have to rush through. But if you know the deal, you know how to do that. And we also provide a free traceable if you just want to transfer it on like an 8x10 canvas and just paint along, but not be all into the deep parts of it. So gotcha. we have something for everybody. So these are sketched in, ready to go. The black canvas has a bit of black around it. And let's look at the paint real quick. Very simple colors today. Cad red medium, burnt sienna, phthalo green, cad yellow medium. Now this one is Naples yellow light, titanium white, and Mars black. Not familiar with Naples yellow light? Not to worry because, again, I teach beginners. So there's an entire blog mm -hmm. about this color all the names that different paint co companies call it, an exact list of the paint companies that have it, and it ranges from $3 to professional range. So it's out there. Oh, and how to mix it with deco paint. The mods have that. So look for the butterflies. If you're brand new here, if it's your first day, look for the butterflies with the wrenches. Those are moderators here. And their whole purpose is to help you find stuff. Mm -hmm. And their viewers, just like you, they've just been here a really long time, so they know where everything is. Yes. <laughs> and so they might share a link with you, or if you have a question, they might be like, hey, we've got a whole video about that, and that's what's going on there. They're actually here to help you do that. Are you guys ready to start step two? Are you ready for step two? I am. And you've got it photographed here, right? Yes, of course I do. Okay, then we're good. So uh, <laughs> after we release a step-by-step -step mini book about seven to 10 days after a video that it's a complete written walkthrough of this. So if that's helpful to you, that'll be available in seven to 10 days. Watch the Facebook page. You should follow all my stuff. All right, let's look at this here. I'm going to get, oh, I'm going to get a cat's tongue, which is really just a pointed filbert. This is my art Sherpa cat's tongue. I'm going to get some water for my acrylic paint. And let's start with the stems. They're kind of fun, right? So I'm going to begin with just green, just the pure green. I don't do anything else. I'm going to come right here with just my pure green. And I'm doing that because you'll notice in the reference photo, the stems kind of almost blend into the back, black background. Mm. Okay. They're it very is. blendy, blendy. And so I can kind of play with that by using the phthalo green. And while it is still wet, I can come get some cad yellow into it. And let's come along the top of this. Is that chalk going to affect anything? The chalk won't affect anything. And I'll sh we clean it up. You can either clean it up with black paint. We're going to blend these two together by wiggling our brush back and forth. Um, sorry. <laughs> I was in the middle of a blendy explanation. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, this goes away with just a uh, damp brush. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight here because we do want this to be highlighted. 
you know, so we're getting that going. And that just sort of blends right down into the. Yeah, it really does. And we'll add the like final highlight, but it's a simple thing. So you want your green. And then a little bit of cad yellow to the top. We're going to do the same thing here. Same now, thing. On the other one here, the, can you talk about the direction of those brush strokes? So I'm going to try to travel in the direction of the stem because that's going to help inform the flow of the painting. Mm. Help show us what an object is or isn't in the painting. I'm just definitely going along with the flow here. And I've got white chalk. It's not staining my paint. I'm going to come in, get a little bit of my... A lot of folks in here have talked about they bought the cat's tongue for this purpose. If you, uh, but this is, if you had a round brush, could you? You could do a filbert or a round brush. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this brush. It never has to be my exact brush that I'm using. I'll always tell you what I'm using. I won't hide that from you, but um, it never has to be that. Many brushes can do many jobs in painting. Uh, many brushes can paint clouds. Many brushes can paint curves. So you just want a brush that you're familiar with. You could easily use uh, either a brush that's shaped like this, which is called a filbert, or a round. Either would be okay. Well, they have to say they really like your brush, and a lot of people are celebrating that they're getting it in, and they're going to rake it out and try it soon. Oh, did Michael's so, get them back in? I'm not sure where they, they didn't say it. They were just celebrating receiving them. <laughs> uh, I think, I think uh, a bunch of the online retailers have them. Uh, yeah. You can see I can clean out the chalk pretty easily. They're Let's around. add another little stem. More stem. You only got three. More stem. Where did one go? Uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not even into my burn sienna. I'm wondering if I even needed it, to be really honest. It was superfluous sienna. It might, it might have been. Sometimes I use it to darken the green, but the, the way the green is flowing over the black, it kind of did it really wonderfully. We'll see if we need it later on. Mm. It may find its purpose anyway. Yeah. And I've got it on a wet palette, so even if I don't use it, a lot of times I have another place for it to be. Oh, you know who I got it from our store. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Self promotion plug. The art forward slash store. Forward slash store. I'm going to bring this around here just a little bit. This is all we really got to do uh, for that initial part of that stem. The stems and step two. Uh, nope. We have one more oh. color, but this is all we got to do with the green. Now we're going to come back and we're going to get into something else. I'm going to take this yellow green that I made and I'm going to add a little. Naples yellow to it if you have it. If you don't have it, just add titanium white. Right. It's a very light color. I'm going to come to the top of this. Maybe even a little more titanium white. You know, you never really think about putting the highlights on green or something like that. Man, that makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. I'll get more into my yellow. It just takes it up that next flowery level. That's what we do. We just take it up a little bit. There we go. So that is it's, step it's, two. I have to say it's weird. The, the surface looks like it's just a glow. It does a really cool thing. That's one of the reasons these are a lot of fun to paint. If you're trying to get into paint flowers, but other flowers have been frustrating in the past, I have found you guys are able to embrace lilies just with a little bit uh, ease. And I think it's because they're not so busy the way a rose is. It's going to be step three. Now, what I like about step three is that we get to start painting the flowers, which is the fun part, right? Flowers is the fun part. And again, if you don't have Naples yellow today, just mix up uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow and white with a smidge of, like the smidgy smidge of green, or go to the blog and um, see the extra information about that color. It really is worth it to have around. And if you get all the colors that we have for the 2021 year, you'll be able to do acrylic April with us. So, acrylic April plug, which I'm really into. Now, before I get into painting all the white on my flowers, mm -hmm. 
I'm inclined to paint the stems. The stamens. Are you inclined? To paint are these the what are they? They're called pistols or stamens? Uh, don't know. It's a flower part. I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow and the smidgiest smidge of my cad red and almost into an orange. And you come here. And you paint that part of the flower that's yellow. Just paint that part of the flower that's yellow. Irene says it's the stamens. Thank you. I love how, well, at least in our community, the internet is very helpful. <laughs> I recognize that isn't true everywhere. But in our community, I find them to be very, very helpful. Well, and my hands are a bit tied up to Google, as are yours. So we get to just ask you guys and trust that you tell us the truth live on our show. <laughs> So far, what could go, what could go wrong? pretty good. So when you get that in, you may find that you need to do two coats. Oh, you're, you're, I just, oh, you almost dipped your wrist. Your, I saw it. Missed it. Oh, just close. All right, now I'm gonna dry. Okay. And I want you guys to do this with me because All John, right. can you zoom in on this? Yes. What do you want to zoom in on? This little stamen right here. Okay. How zoomed opinion. do you want to be? Zoomed. On? All right, well, just tell okay. me when to stop. Do you guys see that? What are we Yellow is a very transparent color. So, yeah, if I all I cared about was the end video being short, you guys just, it, looking good in the thumbnail, we could stop here. But we care about how it comes out at home. And at home, especially if you're painting student paint, you're going to have some stuff there. Now, you could paint it white first, or you can do two coats. We're going to do two coats. So we're going to dry it, and then we're going to do two coats. There you go. Hold on. I have to zoom back out. That's a long zoom in, man. I didn't know how zoom she would me go. All right, here we go. That's a, that's a long way in there. We got a good camera to do that with. That's, thank you to all of our patrons that help make these cameras and these lights possible. And the hair dryer and the surfaces and everything else that you see on the show. Thank you for making that possible. Thank you. All right. Do you guys understand why we're going to do the second coat? I do. Because we need coverage. And yellow is a very transparent color. Whether you're painting student paint, that's econom economical paint, right? Like a set of 48 for, you know, $48, um, where all the paints are the same price. Those can be less pigmented. They're wonderful. They're fine. They work. But they can just have less pigment. So, again, that's just yellow with a titch of orange and my number eight cat's tongue. I go a little more orange to the one on the left. And I actually do see a reason to bring in the brown. Oh, do you? So I'm going to take a little bit of my red and my brown together. And we're going to come into the tip of this. Right there. Let me go back there. And on, there, you, there you go. And a little bit at the back of that one. And actually, really. Quite a lot here. Let me move up my petal here. I'm gonna grab just a smidge of pure cad and just put a little pop of it. Why? Because it'll look beautiful. It will show later and we'll be glad we did it. That's that step. Mm, that's a step. That's well, a step. Hey, and, and look, those are beautiful. They're beautiful. The eye, they're not just beautiful on camera. They're going to be beautiful on your canvas. So, like, that's the goal, right, is that you guys can do this at home. I'm Remember, gonna... if you want the step-by-step, -step, it'll be out in seven to ten days. Follow the Art Sherpa on all the social media and go to the website so you can be aware of when and, it comes out. And, and about... also our newsletter lets you know when stuff is out. And the blog. Tell them about that. Ooh, there's a blog. Newsletter. The newsletter in the blog. We do try to put the newsletter into the blog just in case uh, your filter. Oh, so just in case your filter uh, filters out our newsletter, you can also find a copy of it on the blog um, where all the other really cool resources and information are. And a lot of times there it'll tell you upcoming classes. It'll tell you about special events. And we'll also let you know when stuff is releasing. So if you've been waiting on a particular step-by-step -step book or if you want to wait till we print one out ourselves, we'll let you know when that's out. Does that seem about true, John? 
Let's begin to paint in these gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. I'm super excited about that. I expect this to take two to three layers. Yeah. That seems. I'm going to get, see my paint here? It's a little dirty, and these are Layering. white flowers, so I'm going to get clean paint. I'm not changing brushes yet because there really isn't a need to. Now I'm going to come here and get a little bit of my yellow and my green. And that's the Naples yellow and the green. We can mix that color earlier with the with the phthalo green, the cad yellow, put a little Naples and white in there. What we did. And so I'm going to take advantage of that in a couple of places. I'm also going to get a little bit of my very yellow green. I'm going to come here. Kind of pull that around that petal. I'm going to come through here, I think. Maybe a little bit darker. And I could get some black into it where I want to put it in the shade. Just kind of catch the little bit of that curly cue. If you need more black, you can put it in there. But you can see how it puts that green right in the shade. I'll take some of the shaded green here on this flower. And there's a couple other places that we're going to notice this darker value, right? So this is our green, our cad yellow, and a little bit of our Mars black. I do want it a little more yellow and green and that is just to reflect kind of what's going on with the cow lily a little bit let's put some of this here and i'll just flick those strokes there I like to really observe where this is. Maybe a little more yellow into it. I'll add my navel's yellow. I'm going to add a little curl right here over the stamen. Pull that shadow back. Of add here. I'll have to come back and get its little lip in. I like the lip. It gives me lip. Hmm. And I can add more Naples yellow. You know, I've been so drawn into watching you paint this one with all the green colors. I've been like remiss in throwing in all of the interesting facts we've learned about lilies. Because we did research. We did. But you've been sort of, I've just been enthralled with the greens. Well, right here is why artists like to paint them. This is why O'Keefe and Diego Rivera like to paint them. Hmm. They're beautiful. They're flowing. They're sculptural. And big. And big. I, I thought they were little. Beautiful, I didn't know. I've beautiful never seen creatures. one in real. For real. I just... They're, they're big. Very, very big. They're a big flower. They're also poisonous. So don't eat them. Don't feed them to the pets. As are many pretty things in nature. I feel like this flower gave a lot of indications to somebody that it, it, where it could be like, you know, I'm a little poisonous. You may not want to mess with me. I'm going to take a little more black hair. So you can see that we are adding some of these little shadows in.
where it's necessary. Mm. Just pulling in little shadows. And we and we are pulling in a little bit of the spirit of O'Keefe. No. Be proud of that. There how was you're something doing. about the day lilies aren't even a lily? Is that Yeah, they're not a lily. <laughs> what are they? They're a whole other flower. <laughs> they're a big they're, so they're not related to like tiger lilies. Not in any way. And apparently each of these petals is its own flower. Huh. So that was an interesting thing to learn. And they're from Africa. Huh. And Malawi. But they've been uh uh cultivated all over. Yeah. They're I guess so. they're a real big thing in in Mexico City and Central America. Just pulling along the lip looker up here now. As per Diego Rivera's massive amount of work around them. Yeah, well, he really was about them. Well, and as was O'Keefe, as was uh, as we said earlier, Maplethorpe. Right. Early work, not late work. Early, early work. His late work took a completely different turn. <laughs> Don't let the flowers fool you. I was all like, so what's the big deal about lilies? She was like, just couldn't even get words out. She was like, I was having a moment. It's true. I'm going to add a little bit of that shade there that I see. All right. So we're looking all around for the places where we might have a bit of this yellow green shadow, right? It's a yellow green shadow. I feel like I see one here inside. And you're just jumping around looking for any place that you see that. In right. The reference. I'm trying to use my, my sense of like, well, is that kind of a yellow green shadow or... You know, where is that happening at? Because it is in the shadows that things take form. Mm. So just a simple mix and just a bunch of observation. Always trying to pay attention to what we think we see. And, you know, who knows? I might get a little more of my yellow in there. Mm, maybe a little more of my Naples yellow. Woohoo. I think we're getting two out of the black. It is a shadow, but it's a much lighter one. All right. I feel like this is a good place to stop in this step because what we have now are these deeper, stranger values on the flower. Sometimes when you're painting something white, it gets to be visually and emotionally overwhelming because you're like, well, it's all white, so I don't understand how I would paint it. But rarely are all white things just all white. And so it's this is a wonderful study in value and form and brushstroke that's friendly for somebody who's new to painting. So... Put your shadows there. Remember, what are the mixes? It's a little bit of our phthalo green and cad yellow. You want it to be a little more yellow than green. We, if you have it, you add a little Naples yellow in there. And then where we want to create shadows, we add black. So, are, are we on five already? Wow. We're cooking. We're cooking with fire. Now we're going to add some of the uh, white and yellow, more yellow kind of highlights. We're going to get some of the rest of the flower going as we paint and kind of start to play with this white. I, again, I expect about two more layers after this. So that was three. So I, yeah, three total on the flower, I imagine. Rinse, rinse, rinse. So I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, and it's okay that it, if it has some green tinted in it, because there is a bit of that throughout this flower. I'm going to add white, and we're going to start here. Long, smooth brush strokes. Just painting along. 
And you know what's nice is because you have some shadow colors from earlier, you can always go back in to mix them in if you feel like they belong anywhere. And that is a lovely thing about this. Still on my number eight cat's tongue. Still? Mm-hmm. That you must like that cat's tongue. I do. It's a very pleasant, pleasant tool. It is a multi purpose tool. Yeah. I enjoy it very much. I can get a lighter color here. Again, we're starting our light colors. They may not be pure white though. Mm -hmm. Lilies are very rarely pure white. And if you want them to glow, well, you have to paint that reality. I like how dimensional these come in. They just become form, line, and flow very quickly. Very powerful image. It is a powerful image. And what you'll find is, is that you'll, you'll be attracted. I'm going to get back more into this yellow here. As you go deep inside the flower. Yeah, it's going to be a little more yellow. This is the part of the introspective work of painting. It is. You've got you've to slow yourself down and observe. As we were talking about earlier, you've got to observe and think about oh, what you've got going on. I'm going to get a little bit of my orange here. Just loaded on my brush. I haven't rinsed out, though. Back into my white. Adding more white into it. There we go. We haven't gotten to pure white. Mm. That'll be kind of a last little bit that we do. Just as even the little highlights. To separate out petals and, you know... But these are, this is the beginning where we're trying to talk about, let's get back into the shadow color where we need it. There's a shadow here. Sometimes you've got you've got to play. I'm going to give a quick shout out to all of our friends all over the world. I see some folks from Trinidad and England and Scotland. And I just want to say, we love all of our folks, even here in America. And like, even here, even America. here in America. <laughs> You're so weird. Of like, course we do. Of course He's being right. silly. Don't but, listen to him. I'm going to get more into my green, yellow, and I'm going to come in and sort of. I yeah. just, I think what it is, is that I get so tickled that we have people from all over the world that are here and so i think here we are in our little place in pennsylvania doing our thing and there are people in trinidad watching you paint and that just blows my mind so that's just the beginning right we've just put in the we've roughed in the flower we've got to do it through all three so let's do it let's do it we got to do it through all three you know get my yellow on here needs to have a little bit of the and northern red ireland. in it to let it be there and wales and wales and northern ireland and, and northern I ireland and idaho and idaho exotic idaho i'm into it i've actually only been through idaho one of the places i kind of wanted to go look at actually north dakota as well yeah there's stuff out there there's stuff out there. There's stuff in here. There's not many people, but there's stuff. There's rocks that are really pretty and trees that are really pretty. Lots of places to go, but not a lot of people. Ontario. Getting system. into my shadow color here, like what get into that when I'm trying to like shade even the areas of yellow. Right. So we're just playing with that. Oh, 
This is Sinet. She's from South Africa, and she has tons of these in her garden. Because they're from there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that uh, while I have not enjoyed the fire ants, <laughs> I have very much enjoyed the calla lilies, so uh, kind of made up for it. Yep. So all sorts of, of, things. of imports from Africa, I got to say the calla lilies are the bomb. They won. They, they get, won. They, they get to grow all the good places. But they're little pesky I bet friends. the gardens there are amazing. I have not been. Africa. I can only really imagine. Not been. But I look at pictures online mm -hmm. and imagine that I have traveled there. Someday. Use my imagination. Well, maybe when the, you know, COVID is less of a thing. I come back here. Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh, yeah. Well, I got friends in Edinburgh. I got friends in Scottish places. So I'm just playing with my Naples yellow light, my white, but I'm not rinsing my brush out. So the kind of color that's happening is happening everywhere. And what you're looking for is how light or dark something is. You're trying to recognize the shadows and the highlights where it's necessary. And you preserve the pure white for when you're doing your highlights. When you're finishing up. Yeah. That's the very last step. So it's, it's one of the things that I was kind of noting is it's important as a beginner to remember, beginner to remember to use the full range of color, not just like dark green and white, but there's like all those subtle transitions that make it so pretty it's a big deal right and i think the more of those that you can work into your vocabulary kind of i agree you're painting vocabulary wow there's folks over 500 people from all over the world india to indiana 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 well india to indiana let's put a little bit of green yellow on the inside of the flower so some observational thing. Yeah. Inside the flowers tend to go more yellow into that yellow orange. Shadows tend to be in that yellow green uh, kind of shadow where you have a little black into it. We're right now working on the sort of fluidity of the flower. And then we're going to come back and very economically uh, talk about the details of the flower. But first we have to get a certain, certain amount of... Um, Certain paint amount. on the canvas is really what it is. You just need a certain amount of paint. Got a lot more black in here because we have a bit of this shadow, don't we? Yeah. yeah. This step is going to do all three of these, right? Yeah, we're going to do all three, and then there's one more layer. See, they're streaky right now. Yeah. That's and if you bit. want them to look beautiful, they're going to need one more layer of kind of the same thing, and then we finish with highlights. Okay. So that's what you've got. And, you know, I, I kind of go along very quickly, and that's okay. I'm going to get a little bit of my white on that, and let's come down here. and. So I've got a really cute, uh, when you're ready for it, I've got a, a great you got comment. You've got a cute, ready, when I. Comment. Oh, yeah. you've got a cute comment. Okay. Yeah. I'm always ready for a comment. Are you ready for I don't know, but I'm, I like cute comments. So Shelly. Hi, Shelly. She says, if spring were a person, it would look like cinnamon. She looks oh. extra springy and peachy today. I'm going to take that as a compliment. I would love to be spring. Spring! <laughs> How else could you take that? <laughs> I'm insulted I look like look, spring. I'll tell you what. I've been on the internet a minute, and there's somebody out there, and you all know it's true, who you'll say something like, so innocent, like, I think you look like spring, and they go to you, I hate spring, and you should psychically know this, We're and I'm here. mad at you forever. Nope. And you're like, wait, what? I thought we Now I'm going to unfriend and block you, and you're like, Huh, but that went away I didn't expect, but not here. We're there's very, love. there's Emily, love here. And even Emily says, your calm presentation and your chat with John are a blessing and remind us of the goodness in the world. We has goodness in the Thank world. You, there Emily. is goodness. I, you know what, guys? You Let's are the goodness. They're the goodness, too. You're they right. Are. They are the goodness in the world as well. You make this 
like our community wouldn't be here without you. Like literally, without you, there would be no community. So thank you. Yeah, we would just be alone here on our YouTube channel. Shouting into the darkness. Which has been known to happen, I mean. <laughs> Which we would do anyway, because that's would. who we are. We're... It is who we are. Someone's wants to learn to paint. We're good to teach it. But we do feel blessed because to have the community true. that we have. It's because we couldn't do all the cool stuff we do. So again, we're not yet at the brightest of the whites. We're still working through the yellows and the greens and the white, kind of these tones of glowing white. And where you need value and shadow, you can get more into the values and shadows. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get wild into it in a minute. Get wild. Now, where I can, I try to do kind of a flow of brush stroke where, you know, we're a little more about it. Adding a little more of a shadow. If a lily had a person, if, if this lily. If this lily. If this kind of lily had a personality, what would it be? Serene. Serene. Mm-hmm. This lily is just being itself it is not trying to be any other lily it is just being the lily that it is i can see that so a lot of times what happens to beginners is they'll go to paint and they're at this stage right paint has covered the canvas but the painting doesn't feel resolved to them and i can do a lot on our end we can do a lot on our end to make a painting seem finished but the truth is that there really is a space where. You know, I know that this is like just your underpainting. Stage, yes. But I would totally have you stop here. Really? Yeah. I think it's really cool the way that you can. And I always say this. I like how you can see the black come through. It, it isn't completed. The thought of the flower is fully resolved, but it isn't. The details haven't been pulled through yet. And that's where John is. And see, that's where we all are in our art. We all have a different place we want to be. Yeah, I just think it's pretty because it's like you've, you've executed the thought completely, but left enough to the viewer that still... Well, we're going to keep a lot going to the viewer. I'm going to add some shadow here. See, then, that's... that's okay. I've only watched painting for this... Years and yeah. years and so, years. I have opinions about what I watch. It's he not does like... now. He's like he's like fantasy football, but with art. Honestly, it's really funny when he's like critiquing stuff online. <laughs> <laughs> like... You know, I have. It. What's funny is that I'm the, I'm the guy who walks up that has the ridiculous art knowledge, but doesn't look like I should. Yeah. Because you know, I've got my overalls on. Half the time, I got a pocket knife sticking out my pocket, looking like I just stepped out of the woods sometimes. Yeah, you got a bit of the, uh, <laughs> you know, if you know you, you're not scary. But yeah, if you just ran up on you in the woods, <laughs> it could be a concern. I like to get a little green as I come here to the edge. You get a little more green as I'm coming to this edge. And again, this is layer one. Ready player layer one. Now I'm going to put out a little more yellow. I'm going to let John get a photograph. And actually, okay. zoom in for a second so they understand. Just on anything because okay. they're all streaky. Take okay. a tour around. I'm going to we'll put out more I'm yellow. Little... So... Uh, microwave my coffee. And um, you tour them on the painting for a second. Okay, I'll, I'll mute you and you do microwaving. Okay. Okay. So, so well, if I zoom in, then you can see, like, because we're in a we're in a 100-year-old house. So... I have to, like, and we're on a floor. So I'm going to zoom in over here, and you can see how streaky that is, right? And just for, like, we can get super in there, and you can see. But I'm not going to go any further because it just sort of it doesn't serve us. But uh, the, you can see there that the paint itself is skipping over the canvas, and it doesn't, uh, it's not fully coated. It's still very streaky. And, you know, it's a... Uh, 
this is what you would sort of expect at this stage, but I don't necessarily, um, I don't think it has to go past this stage. I kind of like it. So I've always thought it, it, uh, it looks very painterly, I guess is what we call it. So I just thought that was kind of cool. And, uh, yeah, they did have a nice tour. Did a three-hour nice tour? It was a three-hour tour, but it was <laughs> a... It's a 30-second you know, tour. 30-second tour. It, so what happens to you guys at home? And John's going to take a picture for the step. Okay. Did you step it already or... Okay. Step it. Step it. This is the step. Step. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over and kind of finish it. But what happens to you guys at home is you're very close to your artwork. And you see the paint's motion on the canvas. And you see uh, all the streaks and you see everything that's happening and you start to get hypercritical and you assume that's not how it's supposed to be. I paint with saint -Allier. I paint with Golden. I paint with the best paint that you can paint with. I have a lot of experience. I think it's important that you guys know that this, these streaks, those things, that's a normal part of the process at this stage and not to get frustrated with yourself. And not to get critical of yourself and say, well, you know, mine's supposed to be like this. Mine's supposed to be like that. What's supposed to happen during the painting process is that you uh, create line and form and texture. That You mix colors and you apply that to the canvas and you make marks. And you do that hopefully in a calm and centered way so that you can kind of restore yourself. And in that space, your imagination gets a minute to stretch its legs. And from that imaginative space, imag imaginative, imaginative, imaginative space, you're able to really sort of center on your life and what's happening for you. And I'm sure many of you will say this. I, I know in my own life, I solve so many problems at the canvas, just quietly painting. And I know it's not quiet time with me, but you guys have quiet time on your own. I must sit my camera. So we're going to come in and we're going to just come through and do the next layer of color which will smooth all these out and make them what I like to call the O'Keefe of them and then we'll finish with white highlights which will make them pop oh, so yeah. so it'll go this yeah and then white highlights and done so that's where you're at are you guys ready yeah they are super ready all right so we do the whole thing again and you guys will remember what colors you have so you've got the you know, you've got your yellow and greens coming in. And if you want to get a little white into it, you can. And you'll see right away that this starts to create color and form and activity that is very enjoyable to you. Maybe a little. I want to go a little more green yellow in that and you'll just play with it because it's fun right now and it is fun right now getting those different colors on there see them be them understand them yellow and green and sometimes a little bit of black which believe it or not uh Yellow and black actually do make a landscape in green. You will hear teachers discourage students from using black in their painting, but I think it has a value. I'm sorry, babe. I know when I'm, I'm mixing, I find a mix, and I'm like looking, 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 and <laughs> he's got to go. Da -da 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 -da. So I know he's having an experience here. I'm okay. Are you? Mm -hmm. All right. I mean... I push a button. I don't. It's not like I'm having to sprint across the room to control the camera. So it's like I push a button. It changes camera. So it you does. Do, you do your thing. I'm gonna. It does. It changes camera. And... It's a. It's like magic. And just... so Come along here. Now that you're doing the second layer. It's just same as the first layer, but you're really trying to observe value and color. Is it yellow? Is it white? Is it have a shadow? Is it got a little bit of green in it? You want to really follow the flow of the petal. 
that's an important time right now to get the flow of the pedal going. Um, this is the layer where it starts to get buttery. It gets buttery. You start to really see what you have going on. The paint starts to flow so that you're not fighting it all the time. You'll have to pick up more paint more often. And you may have to rinse out as you travel. I definitely want to create this as a more defined shadow. So we know that I've got my green and yellow. And then we come over here and we get a little black in it. Even more black. Because we need this to be a substantially different value than the petal on top of it. Mm -hmm. Right? We want it to be the shadow. The shadow flower. Well, these flowers are made by their shadows. Let's add a little bit of a shadow here. So we kind of did this earlier where we were like, we played with where we felt like the shadows could be on the flower. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to play with this a bit. Let's come under this petal some. Play with that. We might come in and desaturate this green down here a little. Mm -hmm. Let's get into this part of the flower. A bit of a shadow there. If you have to get more black, get into it. It's okay. I come in and got my white and yellow and green again. Yellow and green. Let's come along here. Getting those highlights. Getting those highlights. Not the lightest, lightest highlights that we'll have. But just starting them. But we're starting to talk about them. Maybe you get into my Naples yellow. I love my Naples yellow. Mm. And you'll see like a stroke will start to say a lot. Each stroke will start to be much more conversive to the whole. And all that really means is that the story starts to be told. Maybe want a little more yellow in there. Because if you look in there, there's a bit of yellow. So let's pop it in. Don't be afraid. Just pop in a little bit of yellow here. There's a little bit of a petal in there. Get a little more white. You know, and I'll give this a couple shots, and then if it doesn't come with me, then maybe I mm. come back to it later when it's willing to make the journey. That curves in a little bit. And then there's just a little bit of this lightest edge. Kind of tapers out here. And then we instantly start to come back into the flower. Just playing with that, pulling that in. Mm -hmm. Gets into my stronger yellow and red that we have down here. Paint that in, scoop that out, tell that flower where it lives.
I love to just be playful at this stage. Grabbed a little bit of red here. Well, where does that go? And you can kind of work right into the green and play that blend that kind of in. And then all of a sudden, wow, it just is dancing. Yeah. Take time, you know, play with it, let it play with you. I know that sounds strange, but it is what we're doing. Sometimes I like to move the chalk so that it visually isn't confusing my eye about the line of the flower. Yeah. You know, and I want to just look and see what's going on here and make sure that I'm really getting a color that I'm like, woo, a little bit coming around. There we go. I'm going to stand back and look at it. You stand back and look at yours. Oh, they love the, they love to take a look at this. Isn't this fun? Yeah. This is fun times. And if it needs more white, you just bring it in right now where it needs it. Okay. It's looking pretty getting there. there. Look at us work that out. This one, mm -hmm. same deal. We're playing the same game. Same game, same game, same game. We'll start with a yellow green at the back of this. Maybe a yellow on the swoop up. A lot more white right here. It is super mesmerizing to watch this. It's super mesmerizing to paint this. And that's something that's important to know. That the act of painting it is enjoyable. This one is more yellow here as I come around. Curve that stroke. Let that flower, let the flower flow. Mm -hmm. It's what it wants to do. It wants to flow. And so I've got to allow it the space to do that. And then get back into, you know, these colors, which are about shading. There's a bit of a little white highlight that happens right here. Mm -hmm. Makes that turn. more into my navels and speak about what's going on. So we get into that green and yellow and black and we make those shaded colors that are so pretty. Come on the inside of that edge and perhaps the outside a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because what's enjoyable? So 
Sometimes you have to add a little water to your paint to improve the flow. Your brush strokes here are again pretty important, huh? They help us see the object. Let me get into my yellow some. They help us see the object for what it is. They are creating what's called implied line and form. The flow of them starts to create a sense of object in space. Mm. It enforces what our mind believes it's seeing. Which it may or may not be seeing, but it believes that it is. So, you know, we don't want to argue with it too much because it's doing its job. Pulling in a little yellow. The trick here for success is to not be so aggressive with your black. Mm. To use your black like a, you would use cayenne pepper or something if you were sensitive to pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm sensitive to pepper. So I might use cayenne pepper maybe a little more cautiously. I might be thinking about that a little bit more. Why is that funny? Nothing. Just it, it's this is one of those things where it's real easy to get sucked into the watching of this, and you know, so I'm just kind of kind of enjoying that process. Yeah, you know. Now, here you're just making sure that you're continuing to make those colors blend smoothly, huh? And we're we're identifying lines and things that maybe need more of our attention for form. Mm -hmm how they are expressed in form. It's funny how you have to use these abstract words to convey these concepts. It well, this is one of those very meditative pieces. It really is. It is um Sometimes people see a lily and they think, well, that's just one and done because all I got to do is paint a bunch of white shapes. And you could. I thought that. Certainly abstract artists will sometimes do that if they want to. I mean, it's not like it's not allowed. I think I want a little more. Bring this little white on the outside here. Maybe a little more of this here. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's some interesting things that I keep you know, spacing out watching you paint. No, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's one of those things where it's like you just get drawn in, and I'm like sitting here going, wow, those. it's just so smooth. And and we want that, right? We want those little bits. Uh, the last bit we'll do with like a number four round, but we've got to get in the, the fluidity of the flowers. Yeah. So that they are the abstracted art pieces that they are. That makes sense. Now, hmm. Among your flower facts... I heard that calla lilies are like a 
they're not they're not solo plants they're not lone wolves so to speak no no there's multiple they're uh clumping flowers they propagate really easily and they um there are many flowers on one flower so like our community it's they're a community a of community flowers community flower right there's a yeah. whole story about how like the flowers associated with Hera, but i didn't tell that story because i read it and i was like it was one of those usual kind of greek god stories where like you know so it was violated. Green tragedy. Yeah, tragedy. And then out, out of that is Kalalilis. And you're like, that's just not a good enough reward for what happened. <laughs> no. That isn't really working for me. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, mm, keep the flower. Mm hmm. <laughs> Where you're just kind of like, yeah, that's not going to be a, an even one to one exchange in my mind. So there's all sorts of, sorts of things you're supposed to do if you, if you plant them together. They can't be soloed. Yeah, they like they like buddies. Now, if you over like so, this I feel like I over made it overly thick. Uh huh. So I'm just gonna come back with a little bit of black. What did you do? I just painted the line oh. too thick. Oh, I see. I can just trim that line back. Make it much more delicate and interesting. That's just the thing to know is that you can clean up a line to create space as well in that. So many things to do. So what are you going to do next? I got to paint this one the same way I did those. I'm going to get into oh, my yellows. The third one. We are playing with the yellow and green the whole way through. And you're just smoothing out those variations of and we're finding like maybe there was a highlight where we put a shadow or maybe there was a shadow where we put a highlight. And if we had that going on there, let's come back and kind of like fix it. If it wasn't as dark as maybe some other things, mm. let's make sure that we capture that. Maybe the black was not as prominent in that part of the green. This is a very, this is a very Chloe, defining layer. Huh? This this layer is really brings it into focus. This is a layer that everybody misses. Mm. They get to the first layer, the one that we talked about that stops all first time painters. Yeah. And then they go, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible painter. <laughs> and then they just don't paint anymore. And what I want to say is you've got to get, every painting is an ugly duckling. It has an ugly stage. You have to just know in your heart that if you keep, going and you do the steps and you do the techniques and you do the process at the end you're going to get a painting you know we had the the butterfly and i loved how everyone was like i got the most beautiful butterfly everyone was like him. yeah you did you, you do adding a little more yellow and see i'm just looking for those colors that we might have those glows The flowers can be more beautiful in your painting than they ever were in nature, if you want. Adding a little bit of a white highlight there. You know, and sometimes you're just like, oh, I got to mm. gotta put this flow here. And you just try to look for the flow from one to the other. This kind of reminds me of Parappa the Rappa. Now, when you talk about the flow <laughs> the here. paint must flow. The, the, the construction of this uh, painting actually had a lot of flow in it. It does. It does. Each petal, well, because each petal folds and flows into the one next to it. Kind of forming this perpetual, like the one in the furthest back for, pours yeah. into the one in the middle, and then the one in the foreground, which for, pours into the background again. It's so sort, of sort of lovely and, and exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And you can just... Find the flow and curve of that brush stroke. And then through that, you know, really, really kind of locate... 
important things about you in the painting. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of those paintings that um, it's one of the heels and reveals paintings because in here you're so focused on the flow of the petals that it allows you to step out of the focus of your life just a little bit, which sometimes we can be a little focused in our lives, right? We can be a little on the news. I know I can be a little on the news and we can be a little bit in current events and we can be a little bit in our worries and a little bit in our concerns and a little bit in our fears, all of those things. But this painting lets you step out of it just a little bit. Wow, that really comes together. And it does just pull itself into its stone, doesn't it? I like this yellow down here. Everyone has a little anxiety over your sleeves getting into the paint. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I'll tuck it again. Sometimes they untuck. It's okay. The Don't sleeves. worry. I think it's just funny because... <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. They're like, your sleeve, your sleeve. The sleeve will be okay. It'll be okay. Tammy's like, don't look at my sleeves. I drag them through the paint all the time. Drag them through the paint. They're fine. They're sleeves. Yep. That happens. Ever, you know, if you're a painter, nobody expects you to have a clean shirt. Very pants, quickly, they get over it. Her pants they're just like, over. yeah, they're just like, oh, she's a painter. My mom has not had clean pants, and I don't even, never. Not since I was a kid. <laughs> just, she doesn't. I don't think I've had them. Huh. Like, brand new pair of pants. Like, doesn't matter where we got them. There's paint on them in minutes. And add a little green flow here. All right, we're adding those petals. We're getting into that. And then we want to definitely get into this part of the this very green yellow space that's going on here. Quite dark. Quite dark. Who doesn't love that, right? I love it. Now, I'm going to go much lighter. I'm under this petal. And pull this highlight in. So this starts to become... much more flowed and finished. Flowed and finished. Mm -hmm. More into the green black. Flowing and finishing, get into the yellow, and into the white. Now, if you were in More Canada. Into the, if you were in Canada. If you're in Canada. If you're in Canada. And you were looking at trying to secure some of these uh, various red-handled contraptions that Cinnamon is using. Well, there's several stores, but the uh, store I know personally is Lise King from King's Framing and Art, and I guess they ship globally. But if you order from her, you've got to fully tell her that I sent you because she's always like, you never send me anybody. And look, I'm always sending you people. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it, so if you're in Canada and you're like, man, I like that brush, but the sticker shock of shipping is a little steep, you can try Lise King in Canada and tell her the Sherpa sent you. And the, if the sticker shock on the brush is a little bit much, you can do a Simply Simmons Extra Firm. So, but, that's but the it. truth is, they don't last as long, and they don't have as sharp of an edge. And they don't, have, not, they don't have this brush. It's I'm, true. I'm, I'm just, just saying, like, something, the reason why the brush costs what it costs is because that's what it costs for us to make them and get them, and that's just sort of what it is. It's not like we're... They're not... There's not a huge margin in brushes, is what I'll <laughs> there say. There really isn't. So, it's not... I would, these are really utilitarian, you know, like. It's, it's a, it's a thing, isn't it? It's, a, yeah, it's, you have to be in the brush business to make money at brushes. And even then, it's and not even, a lot of money. Even then, it's, it's thin, it's those, they work it's for you. It's thin on it. the ground money, it's hustle money yeah, for sure. You, you have to love brushes to make brushes. Yeah, I think that's it. You have to love art supplies to make art supplies. Yeah. So. Because it's not for the mad profits. But we do understand being overseas or even just outside of the country. Uh, if you're in the UK, I know Jackson's uh, carry stuff. Yeah. Um, and I know the Sydney 
art store in Australia carries stuff, and they're really great. Um, I don't know when they have sales or what they've got going on, but when they do, I always say, take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of that yellow-orange right here. So you can see I'm, this is a lighter pedal. We've kind of started to talk about the fold and this other pedal. So yeah. we're getting there, you know? I don't want to say that other folks have knocked you off, but since the <laughs> since you have brought the popularity of the cat's tongue back so Yeah, that's been a real interesting thing to be like, have none in the acrylic thing, and then so many. I'm like, what okay. I thought, what I thought was interesting is I've never seen a red-handled brush in the market ever before, and we were told we were crazy for having red-handled brushes, and now all of a sudden there's a couple of them. But that notwithstanding. We were also with, told that we were crazy for purple and, white and then couldn't have purple, and then then purple was released. I still have feelings about that. But um, yeah, so I'm just putting in a little more yellow and red, uh, mostly because I accidentally put out red and realized what I meant to put out was yellow. <gasps> Spilling tea and brushes. Spilling tea and brushes, as you do. I'm going to orange up my yellow again if I need to get some white into it. I probably also should have put out some white, but we'll, we'll get there. But there but. are many good companies that make a cat's tongue or a filbert around the world. And so if you can't get this particular one, mm -hmm. you could probably find one. Look, I'm never not going to be your art teacher because you did it on my brush. <laughs> that is not a thing that's ever going to happen. And, you know, it's, there are, you know, we, Cinnamon wanted to bring this brush to the market because there wasn't one when she was doing this. And so, you know, get a little bit of orange there kind of coming in. It's not that the, there, there weren't cat's tongues before and after hers. It's just that when she was doing this, no one else was building one to this specification. A firm, extra firm, acrylic handling, large format cat's tongue brush. So, Could be a little true. I might resemble that remark. And that's why she asked to make it. I added that... a little bit of green to that inside flip. Oh, so... look at those. Aren't those gorgeous? I feel like, you know... Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta glow the glow. You look for places where the glow belong. <laughs> and I touch the brush. I'm like, I don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens, right? You start to do a thing and then you're like, oh. Well, that's, you know, it's good because that means that, you know. We're present and awake and aware. Well, folks, the, you know, if if manufacturers start de developing more good quality products, then that's it, good for all of us. Yeah. I'm not even gonna play. That is just good for all of us. We all need that. There needs to be more of that. You know. All right, we're gonna okay. call this the step. I'm gonna is put out some more step? white paint, and we're gonna switch to our round and finish this up. But Ooh. you guys love these, aren't they pretty? They're just like an abstract, except they're not abstract. Lilies, the best. The best. I'm going to add some. Huh? The best, the best, the best. It's so nummy. They're num, 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 num. Don't eat lilies, though. They're poisonous. So the num, num, num is symbolic. I'm also putting out. I'll talk to you guys about it in a second. I was putting out some paint, and I forgot that. I'm supposed to be here. Hi, class. How are you doing today? I hope you're well. Are you feeling great? Are you feeling amazing? Are you feeling fantastic? Is it just terrific? I think they're feeling terrific. All right. Did we step seven? So step seven, and this is where we're going to kind of wrap up, is about creating uh, highlights and uh, pops of drama on the surface, uh, finding places that uh, can be benefited from that. I have put out some titanium white fluid and some more titanium white. I'm going to grab a, a round brush. I'm going to grab an art strip around brush, and I'm going to grab clean water, as you do. As you do, I'm As grabbing we all coffee. Might be doing. No, no, I'm grabbing coffee. Wait, that's not clean water. That was dirty water. You grabbing coffee. If I'm you grab coffee, you got coffee, and I didn't get coffee. All right, that's okay. I still, I still love you. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my white paint onto my round brush, and let's even come here and add a little highlight right there. So we're gonna find these highlights. We're gonna find these moments. Man. 
The furnace kicked on and it's vibrating the floor. Is it? It is. Something fierce, too. Come along these little lip edges where you might have had uh, uh, bits of... It's a flow. Mm -hmm. get to the right. Wow. I like to play with these. That's super crazy over there. Just a little bit here and there um, will help you find like a little highlight there. And a little bit one there is if the back of that caught something, caught some light. I'm going to come along this inside lip of this particular petal. And curve that around just to define that space, define that petal. Okay. I'm going to grab a little bit here. You got it, you got it, you got it. That's awesome. We're doing it. Let's add a little, little highlight right there, the back of that. I love these little highlights. The highlights are where the painting starts to happen, I think, in a lot of ways. Oh, so many. It's where you can kind of focus on contrast. Bring a little highlight right there. And the little one right there. Pull one out here. Again, that's just a number four round. And what we're doing is we're just creating these little dimensional spaces that help us see our petals maybe a little bit better. There we go. Wow. Too much, so I'll bring it back a little bit. There I did there. It's just too much, so we didn't yeah. want it the whole thing. Just a little bit. Right there, maybe. You'll find spots. Yeah. Things that will help you define areas. I'm going to step back and take it in. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's we did it. it. We did it. We did it. That's pretty good. Now, this is the time, you know, you clean up. If you need to clean up anything, you can come back with black paint or just water. Victoria says she's loving the details. This is This is that point where you just calmly... Start to see and I what agree. happens in the painting that works for you, where you want to focus your attention, what, what is important to you. 
on your subject. And I really agree with Irene. This I did not see an ugly stage in this painting. Oh, well, thank you. I, I mean, like, I, you could have stopped at any one of the layers, and it would have been just fine. Oh, that's amazingly nice. I'm glad we went the full layer, though. I the think it's full it, calla lily. I'm glad we went the full, <laughs> not quite the full Monty, but I'm glad we went the full layer. Um, we've got a class on Monday. It is not Monday, Tuesday. It Tuesday. is a Mardi Gras mask um, or carnival. It might technically be more carnival. Whichever that is, if you like masks and feathers, it's a girl's face of masks and feathers. It should be really fun. And then the next weekend, we've got the first of the Valentine's paintings, which is the girl with the heart balloon. And that is going to be kind of similar to this. Uh, next Saturday, we'll do the thing where we meet on Facebook first and pre-show a little bit. But on Tuesday, we'll just go right into it. And the trace will, shall we sign this in some way? I think so. I think we need to. What are you going to sign it with? I think I will just take my... White paint, probably. Yeah. I'm going to come right here under the stem. That seems good. Your signature is part of your composition. So just think about it. Doesn't yeah. have, I, that's all I really have to say. It's not right or wrong to sign or not sign. But just realize that it is part of the total thing. Like when you see this, you see Sherpa. Yeah. So I've got to think about where I put it, how I put it. If, do I want an object that's off here into the void of space? No. I want something that's tucked up under the stem so everything compositionally sort of stays together uh, and the painting remains intact. Oh, my gosh. We did this. You really did? Yeah. And remember, don't eat cow lilies because it's super poisonous. not good for your pets. They attract weird pollen. They're associated with Hera. They come from Africa and Malawi. Um, they're germinated everywhere. They were painted by Diego Rivera. And m most famously, Diego Rivera and Georgia O'Keeffe. But many, many artists paint them. And you can buy them all the time. They're great for still lifes because they it's last a, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I answer. Why did I ask you and then answer? That's a, that's a wife thing to do. Oh. Thank you for spending this time with me. Yeah. I cannot wait to see your version. Uh, if you're waiting on the step-by-step -step book, uh, seven to ten days after the class, we'll start releasing them. If you want to know when it happens. Check the website on the blog, on the newsletter. Check the Facebook page because what I do is I do a big blast release mm -hmm. where I go, it's out, it's out, it's out, it's out. So you can come download it and enjoy it and have fun and use it. And then if you want to wait till we're done, yeah. you can. And maybe you can get one from us all bound up in a pretty, pretty book. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.